first start a recording and then share my screen so you guys can see the PowerPoint. I told you. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, Michelle, I covered the cervical spine a few weeks ago. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I cre and guess what else? I created a YouTube channel now, so you can go on my YouTube channel and see the recording of it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, great. I am so excited. So even though you couldn't make it, it is there for you okay, to good. Perfect. Okay, so for those who have not been here, welcome to Healthy at Home. My name is Dr. Melanie Carminati. Today, we're gonna discuss the scapula. This series of Healthy at Home is educational. It is not skilled physical therapy. So if you are in need of one-on-one -on -one skilled physical therapy, you can contact me. Uh, you can call me or text me at that number there. And I'll gladly set up a session with myself or one of my virtual uh, teammates uh, for your care. So we spoke on Monday about the four joints that make up the shoulder girdle. And this is why the shoulder girdle itself is kind of complex because it's not just one joint. There's four joints working in synchrony to coordinate your upper extremity movements. Now, uh, the glenohumeral joint, that's just the ball and socket joint with your arm bone going into the shoulder socket. The sternoclavicular joint, so as the name implies, your sternum where it meets the clavicle, where two bones meet, that is a joint. Then the acromioclavicular joint. So the acromion is a protuberance from your scapula, actually, which is why I'm going to speak more today about the scapula. And that's more towards if you slide your hand down towards the end of your collarbone, you'll get to a little like curvature, bony protuberance hook like thing. And that's your acromion. And there it is uh, meeting in with the end of your clavicle. That's a joint in of itself. And then the scapula thoracic joint, which I said last time, it's not a true joint. It is um, because it's not two bones meeting each other. It's a whole um, flat bone itself meeting a whole bunch of ribs and meeting the thoracic rib cage. But it is very important with the coordination of our movement. So scapular thoracic joint. So this image is taken from uh, Netter's Anatomy. I'm sorry if it's a little bit blurry, but you can appreciate um, how they pulled back the scapula, that, that flat bone, our shoulder blade, away from the rib cage. And you can see the muscles that run even on that inner part of your shoulder blade, and then also that cover the uh, rib cage itself. So it is multi-layered. There's 17 muscles that attach uh, onto the shoulder blade, onto the scapula itself. So it takes a lot of muscles coordinating to move the scapula properly. Now you can also see this yellow line running down here. That's the long thoracic nerve. Uh, this nerve sometimes can be involved if there's different um, impingement or the way we'll know as practitioners if there's a dysfunction is sometimes different muscles will actually atrophy. Um, so that's just an important nerve because of that unique course that it takes. It's very long and it goes all the way down the rib cage there. And then you see on the bottom, this is a back view. Um, oh, I stand corrected, this is a front view. And again, more nerves coming down, that's the yellow. And you can see how the glenohumeral joint, the head of the humerus, connects into the scapula. The scapula creates a glenoid cavity, AKA the shoulder socket. So scapular muscles. So I already said that 17 different muscles attach. You can see in this lower colored um, example of the scapula and the humerus, they're just showing where some of the muscles uh, insert and originate. Now, I wanna give some special attention to the serratus anterior because this muscle, commonly in physical therapy, we are working to strengthen it because when there is any kind of scapular dysfunction that is influencing a shoulder dysfunction, we wanna strengthen the scapula. So you can see you know, this striated muscle, there's multiple little parts of it. And that muscle, it helps to allow the shoulder blade to move forward. Now the shoulder blade, because of its intimacy with the rib cage itself, 
the course of its movement follows the curvature of your rib cage. So the shoulder blades, uh, typically uh, in a normally functioning shoulder blade, it's not just gonna come off. It has to follow the course of the um, rib cage itself. So the serratus anterior helps you with um, reaching forward. It helps you with any kind of motion with the shoulder that requires the shoulder blade to move slightly forward. So um, just take a moment to look at that and you can see how it literally is like hugging your rib cage. Next, so scapular dysfunction. So what happens when your serratus anterior isn't working? Well, then the scapula isn't going to course around your rib cage. There will be something that's called scapular winging. Um, I'll show you a picture of that after. Scapular dyskinesia. Uh, can happen not only if the serratus anterior isn't working properly, but any of those other 17 muscles. And that just means uh, a discoordination in the movement of the shoulder blades because we have two of them. Sometimes it can just be one shoulder blade that isn't moving uh, properly. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes they each got their own thing going on. So it gets, it gets complex. And then long thoracic nerve impingement, which I already mentioned, that's when that long nerve is impinged and it can cause different presentations. So um, this picture, you can see in this gentleman here, he is protracting his shoulder blades, but you can see on the right side how it's winging, right? It, the shoulder blade is actually kind of coming off of the rib cage a little bit versus on his left side, it's staying, you know, nice and um, intact with the rib cage and traveling around. So this is something, uh, physical therapists, we noticed this, we were analyzing movement dysfunction, uh, we would address via muscular strengthening. So physical, th uh, scapular treatment. So scapular treatment is, is just a part of the whole shoulder girdle uh, treatment. So what it can involve is massage, trigger point release, because many times muscles will have trigger points and it's painful for people to move the scapula in a proper way because the serratus anterior or rhomboids or upper trapezius, we, we know about the upper trapezius that also inserts onto your scapula, you can have trigger points and so it's painful to move properly. So first releasing any of those restrictions is key. Different stretches to stretch out any tight muscles and then uh, strengthening of the scapular muscles is what's next. So. Um, how I work, I always release the restrictions with my patients. Then we go into strengthening, postural re-education, movement re-education. You always have to release what's tight and dysfunctional first before you start to rehabilitate the movement. PNF patterns, that's a PT term. If anyone's been to PT before, you may have heard of PNF patterns, and it just means proprioneuroceptive functioning patterns. And these, it's a very fancy lingo. What'd you say, Barry? There's a mouthful. <laughs> yes, it is. That's why they, they made the acronym PNF because, you know, much easier to remember and say. So rhythmic stabilization is a very common one that I do with uh, scapular retraining. And as the name implies, we're using different rhythms to help stabilize the, the scapula and the shoulder. Postural re-education is crucial with every kind of physical therapy rehabilitation because if you're not aligning the bones properly, they're not going to function to their, to their maximum capacity. Then habit behavioral modification. So you take all of this retraining into real life. So say if someone stocks shelves or they work in a doctor's office and they're uh, all of this doesn't happen as much anymore because everyone's digital now, you know, the old school charts. There are some doctors that are still old school and have the paper charts, you know, like stacking the files um, or whatever it is, working in a restaurant. Depending on the workplace setup, everyone has a need to be doing some kind of overhead reaching or arm involvement in their day. So uh behavior modifications already spoke about that last time we spoke about decreasing upper trap compensation so for most shoulder girdle dysfunction there will commonly be an upper trapezius compensation and that's uh heavily by the um 
Sorry, Brianna, I think maybe your audio's on. Let me see. Okay, good. All right, so um, the upper trapezius overcompensation, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the overcompensation occurs from stress. You know, we end up with tight uh, upper trapezius neck muscles because our shoulders are up to our ears because we're working and, you know, we're unconscious. And that then carries over into how you use your, your shoulder girdle overall. So correcting that's crucial. Scapular integration with all arm movements and postural corrections. So all the same stuff. So I think that, okay, so I'm gonna stop the screen share. And hello, here we are. Okay, I'm going to have us start actually on our backs today. So uh, okay. Let's position this. obviously yeah. I'm going to be giving general recommendations. So you don't have to do this with me. You can just watch and then maybe try later. So, okay, so hopefully you can see my mat there. So the first thing we're going to do is just lay down onto our backs. And from here, if you're wearing a very fluffy sweater like me, you want to give your, I might even take my sweater off. So you want to be able to feel your shoulder blades on the ground. So we're going to have our knees bent, head is down. And you're just going to take a moment to bring your conscious awareness to that upper back area. That upper back area, that back armpit area, that is where your shoulder blades are. So before you do any scapular retraining, you need to know, number one, where are your shoulder blades? So what you're gonna do next from here is we're just gonna start with some breath to get ourselves a little bit more grounded in your body. Place one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. Take a big inhale through your nose. And then exhale through your mouth. Again, inhale, breathing in. And exhale, breathing out. Good, two more times, inhale, breathing in. Just noticing the rise in your chest and your belly as you inhale. And then exhale. We're gonna slide the hands to the lateral ribs next. The elbows will be pointing out. So this is getting our uh, thoracic spine a little bit more mobile via lateral breathing into our rib cage because remember the rib cage attaches onto the thoracic spine. Inhale, breathing outward. And then exhale. Three more times like that. Inhale. And exhale. Two more, inhale, and exhale. Last one, inhale, and exhale. Great. Okay, now we're gonna bring our arms down by our side. I want you to turn your hands so that your thumbs, you can give a thumbs up towards the ceiling. Okay, and from here, what you're gonna do is you're going to just bring your right arm up overhead. Now remember, this is a general recommendation for scapular awareness. If you have any shoulder dysfunction, do whatever feels comfortable for you. And bring the arm back down. And try that again on the left side. Just feeling what's happening in that area. Notice if you can even feel your shoulder blade on the ground. Do that again on the right. And down. And then the left and down. So I can tell you for me, what I feel is that my right feels a little bit more coordinated and my left kind of feels like the shoulder blade moves in a different way, more towards the outside. So now from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend your elbows and make fists with your hands, okay? And then you're gonna take an inhale Staying connected in your body. Exhale, you're gonna think of pushing the back of your arms down into the mat. Good, and then relax. Good, this is a gentle press down. You should not be arching your back. Inhale, 
and exhale, push the back of your arms down. Okay, and now this time, instead of pushing the arms down, I want you to try to slide the shoulder blades down towards your back pockets instead. So inhale, exhale, feel the shoulder blades slide down away from your ears towards your back pockets, and then relax. Do that three more times. Keep using your breath, keep the jaw and neck relaxed. Inhale, exhale, down. And again, inhale, exhale, down. Good, and then relax. Okay, so that was scapular depression. So you were helping to use your lower trapezius muscle, which is one of the muscles that insert on your scapula, to slide the shoulder blades down, important for coordination. Next, we're gonna get into that serratus anterior, that special muscle that helps you, uh, allows the scapula to traverse around the rib cage. So your arms are gonna be up to the ceiling now. This, your hands are still in fists. I want you to separate your arms just a little bit wider than shoulder distance apart. So it will be like your arms are in a V almost. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, first imagine that you're squeezing a lemon under your armpit. Good, and then relax. I got that cue from one of my colleagues, Kit. She's an amazing Pilates instructor and I just love this cue from her. Inhale, exhale, imagine that you're squeezing a lemon under your armpit and feel those under armpit muscles activate. And then relax. Again, inhale and exhale. So as you're doing that, you're gonna feel that your arms turn out slightly, so the thumbs will go out slightly when you squeeze the lemon, and that's okay. All right, now, rest for a moment. Keep the arms in that slight wide V position. The next thing you're gonna do is just move the hands and the arms slightly down away from the shoulders, so I don't want you to be directly over the shoulder. Inhale, exhale, Reach your arms up to the ceiling by lifting those back shoulder blades up off the ground. And then keep the elbows straight and bring the shoulder blades back down to touch the mat. Do that again. Reach the arms up, punching with your scapulas. And then shoulder blades come back down to touch the mat. It's a very small movement. You won't be getting very much movement. This is all just about feeling the bone of the scapula move and coordinate, coordinating the proper muscle activation. Inhale, exhale. You're sliding the shoulder blades, reaching the arms up to the ceiling, then tapping back down. Do that one more time. Inhale, exhale, shoulder blades slide, and then relax. Okay, great. So what we're gonna do now, you're gonna carefully turn over onto your side and then come onto your hands and knees. So whenever you're on your hands and knees, you always want to have your hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. We're just gonna take the serratus anterior awareness and strengthening. Hey Jeannie, I'm happy to get it So your hands are under your shoulders, your knees are under your hips. You're gonna keep a nice long spine. Now, here's the challenging part. You should be pushing through your arms now so that your chest stays lifted. We're going to do a little warm up. I want you to drop the chest down in between your arms, keeping your spine straight, and then push through your arms and lift the chest back up. This is simple. This is using your serratus anterior and also some of those middle uh, trapezius rhomboid muscles. Let the chest drop down and then push through your arms and lift the chest. Good, two more times, chest drops down, push and lift, and chest drops down, push and lift and hold it. And see if you can hold that shoulder blade spread, chest lifted position, and then relax. Okay, take a moment, we'll come back up to sitting. Okie dokie. All right, so I'm going to bring it back to the PowerPoint. Oops, oh, I can't see that yet. Okay, 
got a screen share first. Okay. Oopsies, don't want to do that. Okay, so um, we, I'm just going to backtrack to some of the, um, let's see, let's see. Okay, yeah, so this is just a good one to look at. So we did some really simple scapular awareness exercises there. I always like to start with breathing because um, it's common to just be caught up in the conscious stream of thoughts. So taking that moment to get a little bit more deeper connected in your body is crucial so that you can really feel and be present in the movement. We started simple, just, um, we did the breathing in the belly, one hand on the chest, one hand on the belly, uh, lateral breathing, rib cage breathing, the rib cage attaches onto your thoracic spine. Then we started doing the arm movements overhead just noticing if there's any kind of difference in your scapulas uh super common if it is uh, i have the difference too my right i'm um, right hand dominant my right scapula just coordinates better because i tend to use my right side that's that's a common thing that can happen uh, then we went into some gentle scapular retractions so we started with a tricep press back just to get your body warmed up and then we changed it to letting the scapula drop down which is important for um, overhead movement and um, things of that nature. Then we transitioned it to serratus. So the serratus is that one that helps the scapula move around the rib cage, really important in coordination for all scapular activities, honestly. Um, and then we finish with an exercise on your hands and knees. So that is just number one. If you ever do any um, yoga exercise or any exercise on your hands and knees, you always want to have that chest kind of lifted and the shoulder blades spread because that will properly strengthen and engage all those scapular muscles. So those are just some general recommendations, scapular awareness, um, scapular health, and it will just help with shoulder girdle health in general if you are able to implement those recommendations. So um, just to wrap up, you guys know this is a bi-weekly 30-minute video chat. I uh, encourage you to tell friends and family who would maybe benefit. Next week, I'm speaking about the lumbar spine, I believe. Yes, so lumbar spine some more. I'm going to be picking a body part and doing it in two parts, so Monday, Friday, because um, this is only 30 minutes, and as I said last time, I could literally go into depth about this stuff for like weeks, but this isn't physical therapy grad school, is it? So, <laughs> um, so uh, virtual Pilates mat. I teach a beginner mat class, Tuesdays, 11 a.m. That's on Zoom, if you guys would like to join. The intermediate class is taught by my uh, teammate, uh, Dr. Amarantha Burkle. That's Wednesdays. I need to change that. That is actually at 6 p.m. now. We bumped it down a little bit later for those who are, who are working from home. And then... Um, my team and I were still doing evals, follow-ups, and Pilates one-on-one -on -one sessions. So here is my contact info. Ooh, I want to also announce something super exciting. I am going to be starting uh, or beginning an Instagram Live series starting May 26th. So I'm going to be featuring some of my colleagues, um, some doctors, some Pilates professionals, some uh, super amazing physical therapists. Um, next, uh, the last week in May is the, f is the start of it, May 26th. On May 27th, that's going to be a dance specific um, I, Instagram live where I'm speaking with the uh, physical therapist of the Alvin Ailey uh, Dance Theater. If you guys know Alvin Ailey Dance, I work with her. Um, she's she was one of my first colleagues when I first graduated who was just really supportive of me in the dance PT world. And I work with her doing the injury prevention screenings for Alvin Ailey. So she's been gracious enough to come on in. She may not be on Instagram. She may be on YouTube with me, but I'll keep you posted. Everyone else should be on Instagram. So that's something exciting to stay posted about. So thank you. And then I want to save the last few minutes just to answer any questions about the scapula. 
Very thorough, Melanie. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, you. My question is just what's your YouTube channel? It is Inspira Physical Therapy and Pilates. Okay. Okay, great. We'll check yep. that stuff out. Excellent. Please do. Okay. All right. So uh, happy Friday, happy May, and I'll see you guys in the upcoming Healthy at Homes and then stay posted for the Instagram live stuff that I'll be announcing next week. I'll, right. have, to I'll have to join Instagram for that. What was that? <laughs> I'll have to join Instagram now. You'll have to join Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Yes, you. if you want to be there for the live, yes, but what I can do, um, what we're going to do is we're going to record it, so uh -huh. I, could, I could always send it to you afterwards, but it's always cool to be there live, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, I'll see if, I'll see if my, you know, I'll try and get around my mojo. <laughs> well, you know what, if you're getting a new smartphone, you can easily download Instagram. It's super easy. You make the account and then you just follow in spirit physical therapy and you'll see everything that we're posting and it'll be very easy to, to be there for it. Okay. Okay. And I'll talk you through it if you need to also. Okay. Thanks. I'm, I, okay. I'm sorry. I missed the rest of it. I had a phone call that I was waiting for and I was afraid that if I didn't take it, then I would never get it. No worries. No worries. Yeah. I was hyped for this though, but things happen. Anyway. All right. Well, I, I can, um, I'll send you the YouTube link once I, once I get this one uploaded. Great. Okay. All right. Have a good weekend, sweetheart. Have a great weekend. Bye, bye guys. Bye. 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 Have a good weekend, everyone. Okay.